Join the Music Universe podcast for this special social media extra from CRS 2021. Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Music Universe podcast extras. I'm Mad Bailey, along with Buddy, of course. And today our guest is Exiles Marlon Hargis. Marlon, how are you, sir? Well, I am uh, surviving. I'm here in Nashville and uh, dealing with the snow and ice and uh, like everyone else here. So uh, uh, doing OK. I'm, I'm still around. <laughs> you got power. You got water. You got everything good. You stay in. Uh, you stay equipped. Yeah, <clears throat> uh, it's not. Well, actually, it, it has been pretty bad here. Uh, we, we didn't lose power here, luckily. Uh, actually, I just ran to the store for the first time in about four days and it, it's it's not it's not good out I'd, I'd say anyone in Nashville uh stay in if unless you have to get out because the roads are still pretty bad mm -hmm. so tell us about exile what are you guys up to these days any new projects coming out uh I was going to say well we're just sitting around like everybody else <laughs> but, uh, um well <laughs> Yes and no. We uh, we just you know we we had a new project out for the Christmas season, a, a new single that did uh, very well actually, and um, really now it's just a matter of, of of waiting for tour dates to uh, sort of finalize. We we have a lot of dates booked uh, starting in May, uh, but of course you know things can change as you well know between now and then. So hopefully we'll we'll. We'll have a pretty busy touring schedule. Um, we have a lot of material in the can. I mean, not in the can, but ready to go. Uh, the guys have been writing a lot over the last year. Uh, we'd like to do a couple of projects this year, uh, but we don't have any specific dates for anything yet. It's just kind of a wait and see at this point. Were you guys uh, on the road last year when everything shut down? Well, we had just started. Uh, interestingly enough, we were on a cruise ship right before all the stuff went down, and so uh, we were lucky to, to get to get off there. Uh, and we did we did three or four dates, you know, kind of when things were starting, and a couple more through the year. But uh, like most everybody else, we, we were pretty well shut down. Um, and everybody dealt with it pretty well. You know, I mean, we, we understand there was no choice and, and you have to take care of yourself. So we've, uh, we're, we've all done well. Everybody's kept a good attitude and, uh, and, you know, we keep in touch and, and try to, you know, just kind of keep planning for, for a better year this year. Yeah. And when you guys say that, uh, that some of the band has been writing, are they doing it? Like, do you know how the process, are they doing it via zoom or are they actually getting together? Well, actually, the two of the guys are the main writers in the band, JP and Sonny, and they actually do it by Zoom. There's a, a third person who writes with them, and they uh, they do it by Zoom. Uh, we're a little unique in that we're, we sort of live in different parts of the country. Uh, three of us live here in Nashville, and two of the guys live up in Lexington, Kentucky. So mm -hmm. it, it creates some logistical problems sometimes, but uh, that's just the way we've dealt with it over the years. So you know, we don't really hang out or see each other that often when we're not on tour, but that's, that's, you know, as I say, that's just the way we've dealt with it for years. Absolutely. I want to talk a little bit about your career path. You guys initially were a, a rock band, pop band, had a big, big hit in the seventies, and then you reformed as a country band. What, what <clears throat> prompted that changeover and, what do you make of, of being able to switch between genres like that? Well, it was, it was not that difficult to transition actually. Uh, and we didn't really change our sound that much, if at all. Um, the situation was, you know, we had Kiss You All Over and a, and a couple other minor hits and we, we were still having a lot of success in Europe as a pop band, but frankly, in the United States, our record company had kind of lost interest and, we, we really weren't doing that well. And, and at the same time, country artists were starting to have hits with our songs, uh, notably Alabama, two of their biggest hits were actually exile songs and, and, re, and released and re, recorded and released by us first. 
on, in the pop field and did nothing. So, and, uh, and up some other songs that we had written were becoming country songs. So at a certain point, our manager came to us and said, look, guys, you know, you're, you're having hits in the country field with other people. Maybe we should just switch, you know, uh, genres and, and go there. And, and also the thing to remember at that time, the country market was changing a lot too. You know, because of groups like Alabama and the Oak Ridge Boys and the Gatlin. So when we made the transition, it wasn't a huge change as far as our sound went. It was just more a matter of, you know, that's how we were marketed uh, at that point. So, uh, you know, there were a few people who who sort of didn't like us coming over the country. But in general, it wasn't that big a, big a, a transition. Yeah, kind of like um, Kenny Rogers did. I know he was more on the pop and then kind of went country and made it huge. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And, and I, if, if I recall, there were a few people who didn't, you know, weren't weren't too appreciative of that. But uh, yeah, we, we it was just kind of a, a good thing, a, a thing of timing, you know, the country was changing and then we were changing. So we were, we were very lucky because we really had a lot more success as country artists than, than pop artists. So uh, We've been very lucky, actually. Yeah, and it looks like, uh, if my math is correct, 2021 celebrates 58 years for you guys. What's that road been like? <laughs> That's a long time. <laughs> it's, uh, you know, it's uh, we've been together a long time and done a lot of stuff and seen a lot of stuff. <laughs> and, uh, you know, the, I think the bottom line is we, we actually – believe it or not and still enjoy working together we enjoy being on stage we enjoy playing together there's there's something that happens between the five of us when we get on stage and it's one of those things that you can't really explain it's just we we kind of gel as a band more so than we do as individuals you know and and uh you know we you know we were talking a couple of weeks ago we had a kind of a zoom meeting and uh you know, talking about going forward with this year and, and none, none of us really want to quit now or hang it up, you know, or retire. We're still, we're still excited about going out and playing again. So, you know, we're, I guess we're lucky in that aspect too. Yeah, absolutely. And to have a career like that, I know you guys just released uh, your new double CD called the garage tapes. Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, that was, uh, it's been a couple of years now. Um, uh, what uh we had done a greatest hits a couple of years before that and then back in the late 70s and early 80s we we lived in lexington kentucky and we we worked as studio musicians in a studio that was in a in a in a what used to be a garage actually like a lot of studios and uh uh we would work during the day as studio musicians and we would work at night on our material you know we we got free studio time for doing studio work. So we would go in from, you know, months at a time and every night and just work on songs and sort of work out the songs we were going to record before we would go to Los Angeles or Nashville to record them. It would save a lot of time and, and money in the long run. Uh, so we had a lot of those songs that we thought had been lost because uh, the studio closed in the late eighties. And all the stuff was on on tape, and we we really didn't know what happened to it. And a few years ago, I think it was JP actually found some tapes in his closet that he wasn't aware of or had forgotten about. And we got we got to looking at them, and it was all of those songs that we had had demoed back then. And there was about we we managed to save about thirty songs out of out of it, and we uh, had them digitized and remastered and everything, and they. They actually held up pretty well. We were, we were surprised. Uh, we, it didn't lose a lot of quality. They sounded pretty good, we thought. So we released, uh, you know, all those. And we call them the garage tapes because that's what they were. They were they were songs that were recorded on tape in a garage. And it was maybe maybe different versions of the hits, maybe some outtakes and stuff that never <laughs> made uh, Very interesting stuff. And... Uh, We've, we've had a great reaction to it. We, we weren't sure if people would really enjoy hearing that sort of stuff, but it's actually been one of our biggest selling uh, products so far. 
you know, I think fans, real fans of music really care about the kind of lost stuff, the deep sessions. And I think that's what you're seeing. And I think that's what you're finding. And that's absolutely wonderful. So when this is all over, are you guys going to get back into the studio or try to record something and then head back out on the road? Or you just, uh, I know you had that Christmas single you mentioned, but any plans for another full album? Well, yeah, uh, I think what we'd like to do, of course, you, you know, with today's technology, we don't have to necessarily think in terms of albums. You know, mm-hmm. we may just go in and record a few songs, um, you know, and then, then release them uh, online. Um, it, as I say, I know Sonny and JP have a number of, of songs that uh, we'd like to record. We also later in the year, we... we initially planned to do a Christmas EP last year. And because everything shut down, we ended up just doing the one single. I think later in the year, we're probably going to try to finish that project. And, you know, of course, it won't be out till next Christmas. But uh, yeah, we've, we've got a lot of stuff to work on. Of course, the issue is us being in two cities, we have to do a lot of it, you know, you know, using uh, long distance technology. But um uh, yeah, we're, we're definitely want to do that. And of course, the touring, it kind of remains to be seen how things go. You know, to say we've got we've got a bunch of stuff scheduled, but we'll just have to wait and see. So it, it, we're sort of in a waiting game still at this point. Well, you know, we hope you get back out there on the road soon, just like we do everybody. Marlon Hargis, thank you very much for your time. This was great. Before we let you go, anything else you want us to mention, anything you want to mention, and uh, give us your socials, and we'll be sure to to tag you when this goes up later today. Yeah, uh, I want to be sure and tell, uh, tell everyone of our fans who don't already know how they can keep up with us. Uh, also, I won't go into too much detail. We will... Pretty soon, in about a month, we're going to have a, a sort of an exciting announcement about our, our our catalog is going to be available through a source. I won't get into it too much, but we, we're we're excited about being able to kind of re-release all our all our catalog pretty soon, within about a month. Um, the best way to keep up with us is is our website is uh, exile.biz, B-I-Z, but more so our Facebook page is probably the best way to keep up with us on a daily basis. And that's, it's called exile band official. That's the official uh, Facebook page. And we, we post stuff every day there. We post our, our touring schedule and uh, post videos and, and what's coming up. So, so that's really the best way to keep up with us. And, and, and thanks for letting me uh, kind of uh, talk about that. I appreciate it. Are you guys on Instagram? You know, so I said, I don't, I'm so low tech. I, I don't know. I think we are. But, um, as a matter of fact, I'm pretty sure we are. And I, and I, I think that's somehow tied into Facebook. I, I think they yep. go hand in hand. But uh, I'm so low tech. Other, other than Facebook, I don't understand any of that stuff. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm like, like, some days we're right there with you absolutely <laughs> exactly I, I, I think I discovered a couple of days ago I have an Instagram account and I didn't even know about it <laughs> <laughs> I don't, don't know how to use it and and really I, I just don't really get into that stuff too much you know I guess I'm showing my age here hey, it's all right I'm I'm trying to avoid TikTok as much as possible but uh, yeah, yeah exactly kind of the trend these days so you know you go with it <laughs> <laughs> all right marlon thank you very much for your time we really appreciate it thanks guys i appreciate it hope, hope to see you guys next year hopefully in person absolutely we hope so too uh-huh.